stop. Stop shoving your face down my throat. Hey, Andrew. Yo, how have you been? what's up? I've been good. How have you been? Um, I've been good, you know, partying and stuff. Partying? Yeah. Dang, well, I've been, I found this man named Jesus. He set me free from that. And, you know, I was on the road to hell, but he made a way when there was no way. And he could do the same thing for you because if he could do it for me, he could definitely do it for you, you know? He died on the cross for all of our sins and we were all on the road to hell, but he made a way when there was no way. And he and just he truly, truly set us free. Nobody, 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 no man, no, man, no, no other God. God. Better repent, because if you don't, you're gonna burn in hell. And you think you're gonna party? You could go party in the lake of fire. And you could dance in the lava while your press is burning. Repent, I said, repent, or you're gonna die. You're very offensive. What did I even say? Like, what did I do? And if God's gonna send me to a lake of fire, I might as well just swim in it and I'll party by myself. Thanks. Like, what did I even do, bro? No genuine Christian will force their faith on you. If that is true, then why do these Christian people keep pestering you over and over again with their faith and with their God? Well, what many people call forcing is merely presenting. You see, most Christians feel the conviction to follow the Great Commission. What is the Great Commission, you ask? Well, before Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, he said to all the people listening to him and his disciples in Mark 16 and 15, and he said to them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We cannot force someone to believe as we believe. That's the equivalent of holding a gun to your girl's head and telling her, Tell me that you love me, or else. God's supreme ethic is love. Love is not compelled. God is love. Here's what the Bible says about love in 1 Corinthians 13, 3 to 5. If I give everything I have to the poor and even sacrifice my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. So why do so many Christians insist on sharing their faith? One answer, love. I tell you, the gospel, also known as the good news, because I love you. Think about it. If I love you, wouldn't I want what's best for you? That is why we warn people of heaven and hell and the pending possibilities. We love you enough to risk all that we have in terms of reputation to see you make it into heaven. If you love your child, would you allow them to eat whatever they want whenever they wanted? I don't think so. Would you not at least warn them of the dangers? They would pig out on chocolate, ice cream, and chips all day and night if you chose to stay silent. Then the consequences would be horrific and you would be complicit in their pain. What the world defines as love nowadays in many instances is actually hate. Hate could be defined as the callous permitting of looseness, aka neglect, to engage in self-destructive behavior without a hint of warning. This is proof that you have no love for the ones you're actually neglecting. You don't care enough to let them know the dangers ahead. Now, some may or may not believe in heaven or hell for that matter and truly despise the religious harassment. The incessant proselytizing can be overbearing at times, but this is not the bent of the genuine gospel and genuine Christian. A follower of Christ is not about proselytizing or trying to grow a church or a denomination. It is about inviting people to taste and see that the Lord is good. It is about salvation. It's about genuine liberty, real freedom. And another question that you may want answered is, why are these Christians so judgmental and they're always talking about doom and gloom and hell? I mean, enough of the gloom and doom. Okay, well, You'll never know how good the good is until you know how bad the bad is. We were all born in sin, possessing a one-way ticket to hell. Yes, we incurred the wrath of God. We had a debt that we could not pay. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We deserve death and hell for our sins because we could not redeem ourselves Then Jesus Christ paid what we could not pay. He paid our fine. That's why on the cross, he said, it is finished. So 
Jesus authored salvation. It is a free gift from God. All you have to do is accept it, repent, and put your trust in Jesus. There's nothing hard about this truth. It is indeed good news. Every genuine Christian everywhere wants to share this with you. Don't despise them for it. So, if a Christian is shoving anything down your throat, it's life. It's like a mom trying to make her child take medication because it will make her kid feel better. The only difference is the medicine that is Christ tastes great. So, if you have a Christian friend who constantly talks to you about the Lord Jesus Christ, tell them thanks. There might come a day when you will not hear anyone, especially a friend, talking about Jesus anymore. And if you are a Christian and you have friends who don't understand why you do what you do, share this video with them. Now think about that. Song in every verse